Hi, I'm Rebecca, and welcome to the Parent Teacher Bridge, where you can find the solutions and resources you need to enrich your child's education. Maybe you've been told that your child needs better number sense. But what does that mean? Today I'm answering that question for you and I'm gonna give you some simple, affordable, and fun ways that you can build your child's number sense, even if you're a busy parent. <music> Having number sense means that you have a good idea on how much a number is, what it represents, and how it compares to other numbers. Is it greater than or less than? And how a number is actually built, the parts of a number. Now there are some very basic number sense activities that you can do at home that are going to lay a great foundation for your child in math throughout their school career. And you can do these throughout your day. You can do them in the evening or on the weekend, whenever is a good time for you. If you're watching this video because you have a struggling math student and you're trying to catch them up, you might realize that the reason why they're struggling so much is they don't have a healthy foundation of number sense. Here are some easy ways that you can practice number sense at home and help build your child's confidence in math. Here we go. Number one is involve your child in daily math activities. Have you ever stopped to think just how much we use math in our everyday? Try involving your child in those activities. Now, a simple one that I do is cooking. It might be using the measuring cup. Or what about house projects? Using a measuring tape, knowing where to start measuring and what some of the tick marks mean. Now, it doesn't mean that your child is going to learn everything just from one time sharing a math experience with you, but a little dose here and there of seeing how math works in the real world can really help build your child's number sense. Let's think of some other ways that your child can be involved in daily math activities with you, even if it's just a conversation. Here are some other ways that I thought of that you can involve your child in daily math activities. How about counting money? or purchasing something at the store with your allowance money. How about considering tax and how much that would be? Counting objects is one of the most important things you can do. Just make sure that you teach your child in the beginning to place their finger on something when they are counting, one at a time. Some children just need reinforcement on that activity alone. It's called one-to-one -one correspondence. What about putting things into groups when you're counting them? counting them into groups of five or groups of 10. Another thing that you can do in the real world is read thermometers, read clocks, have an analog clock on the wall, have a thermometer on your porch outside and help your child practice reading the thermometer. They might only get something as simple as, oh, we read this number as 34 instead of 43. As basic as that sounds, that's going to help those younger children in their early years of math. Can you think of some additional ways that you use math every day in which you can involve your child in learning with you? Write a comment below. Hi parents, is your child struggling to read or even hates to read? Nothing you have tried has worked? Get my free guide, five quick tips to immediately help your struggling reader. I'm gonna show you the simple tricks that I've used for years to successfully improve children's reading and their confidence in reading. It's easy, it's simple, and it's free. Just go to theparentteacherbridge.com slash reading help. You can find that link in the description below. Number two, count, count, count. And this may be one of the very first things that you did when your child was first learning to talk. You probably said one, two, three, Maybe you counted when they were going to be in trouble. You have five seconds to get over here and you counted to five. So I want you to think about those benchmarks like counting to three, then counting to five. What about counting to 10? They have 10 fingers, right? And we have a base 10 number system. If they've made it that far, you can make an X goal of counting to 20 and then up to 50 and then up to 100. Well, they may be saying those numbers just like kids say the ABCs and they don't fully understand all the letters and sounds yet. 
But you want to learn, you want to have them learn how to count up to these amounts so that when they start applying it and actually counting objects, they're not skipping numbers. Now it is normal for children to skip a number here or there, or maybe they're new at counting to 100 and they're skipping a whole section of numbers, okay? One thing you can do with that is put things to songs. There's a YouTube channel that I really like. It's called Kids TV 123. We've been watching it for over 10 years with my children. And they have a song called The Big Number Song. And I do think that not only watching this on YouTube, but I think that you can get um, a download of the songs as well. So that may be something you want to look into. But it's catchy. It's not annoying to listen to if you're an adult and your child is listening to it on repeat. And it's just a fun way set to music of counting all the way to 100. And then it goes a bit more than that. Now, my four-year-old really loves the idea of counting to 100. It makes her feel like such a big girl. And something you can do with that is to print off a copy of a hundreds chart. You know, they have the rows that go to 10, then down below it's 11, all the way up to 20, and you can read it going across, but you can also read it going up and down by counting by tens. So if your child has mastered counting by ones, other things you can work toward are counting by tens, or fives, or twos. And there's an abundance of songs out there that you can use to help you in doing that. When they are counting objects, it is helpful to use their finger. So put one finger on each thing. They might even want to move the object as you count them. Now I have some math blocks at home that I use, but you know, you can even use Cheerios or M&Ms, just Watch if your child is hungry when you're giving them to them. Um, and practice sorting. When you count, you can sort things into groups of fives or groups of 10. If your child can count to 13, maybe show them how you count to 10, move it over to the side, and then you pick up with 11, 12, and 13. My mom always taught me that when she went through the bank, she would get her cash out and she would count it right there in front of the teller. And she might even count it twice. And I asked her one time why she did that. And she said, you know, she learned from experience. She had a situation in the past where she had gotten her cash from the bank and she drove off. And only later did she realize that she did not get the right amount. So she learned from experience. These are all things that you can do with your child as far as counting. Now. If you'd like to see what kind of blocks that I use when we're actually sitting at a table and focusing on some math activities, I'll include a link in the description below. But here's a picture of what they look like. Now these blocks are very basic, but I do like how they connect and I like how there are colors in them. Which brings me to my third point. Use hands-on activities, manipulatives, and math tools. Manipulatives just means anything that you can hold in your hand, manipulate, put into groups, move around. And as I said before, that might be candy or cereal. Um, the only thing about that is it is edible, so they may have a way of um, subtracting, let's say. But let's go back to these blocks. What are some simple ways that you can use these blocks? Your child's definitely going to want to stack them, right? So let's say that you have two different colors, a blue group and an orange group, and you might have them make a stack here and a stack here, and you tell them, don't make the stacks the same size, make them different sizes, and you hold them up on the table and you can compare which is more, which is less, okay? So there are more blocks in the blue group. How many total are in the blue group? How many total are in the orange group? How many more does the blue group have than the orange group? So if you noticed in my question asking, I used words like more, less, how many more? You can also use words like greater and less and you're just using them back and forth and you grab different amounts. You can connect them, you can grab them 
in a handful and lay them out and have your child count them. Count them more than once. See, if they're not getting an accurate number, what is the reason? Are they counting one twice? Are they not moving their finger on each one or moving them away as they count them? And you can work on those little skills. You can do this, parents. I know that you know how to count. All you're doing is giving your child something to practice and saying, where are they messing up? And oh, that's why they messed up. Now let's go back and fix this. Well, this is how I do it. And you can share that information with them. It's not too hard. It just takes a few minutes. Now some other blocks that might be helpful to you are called base 10 blocks. Remember, we have a base 10 number system. You can divide when you're counting up to 100. You can divide it into different groups. Things change when you pass the number 10. And then it follows another pattern. And then you get to the number 20 and then you have the 20s, and then you have the 30s. We have a base 10 system. So teaching your child that when you get to that full group of 10, you have to come over and start another group. That lays the foundation for one day when they are going to add and they have to regroup and put their number up at the top again, or when they subtract and they have to borrow or regroup whichever way you learn to explain that, it all rests on that foundation of the base 10 number system. You can get base 10 blocks pretty cheap online. You can even work with some virtual base 10 blocks online for free where your child just drags and drops. Now, if you're unsure of, okay, I have base 10 blocks, but what do I do with them? You can do a simple internet search and just type in base 10 blocks worksheets or base 10 worksheets, or you might type in place value worksheets. And it doesn't mean that you have to give the worksheets to your child, but just having a worksheet in front of you can help you think, oh, okay, let's make this picture look like this. These are those worksheets you probably did when you were a child, well, where they had the square shape and that represented a 100s block, and then they had the 10 sticks and that represented a tens group, and then they had the ones block, and that was a ones unit. So just printing those off can help you get an idea of how to use the different base 10 blocks so your child really has a concept of what does the number 34 mean, and how is that different from 43? Young children can confuse those all the time, so giving them something visual that they can hold in their hands is going to help them build that number sense. Now, I'm going to include some links in the description below where you can purchase some of these things for less than $10. It does not cost a lot, and you can reuse them for other children and resell them when you are done. Something else that you can do with some of the colored blocks that connect is you can expose your child to the idea of number bonds. Number bonds, they will help a child see how they can add to make a bigger number and how they can subtract and figure out what is the other number missing in the equation. And like I said, for base 10 blocks, you can research number bonds worksheets online and come out and see what they look like, but they are very easy to just draw yourself. So what you might see are three shapes connected. They're usually circles, but I have seen them be squares before. Your child can get creative and make some of their own after you've practiced for a while. But the total, let's say you have the number 18. The total, the number 18, will be in one circle, and it will be connected by a line, two lines actually, one line that goes to another circle, another line goes to another circle, and there's gonna be two parts of 18, or two other numbers that when you put them together, they make the number 18. So you think, well, you could do nine and nine, you could do 11 and seven, or on a basic understanding, you could do the 10 and the eight. And ask your child, what are some other ways that you can build the number 18? And always go back and count and check, do you have 18? You can write numbers in your number bonds, or if you have a large piece of paper, and you have an area where you can put your actual blocks in the different circles, that would help. Just make sure that you have the number 18 written down so that you have 18 blocks total in the other two circles. You wouldn't want to have 18 blocks here 
and then 10 here and 8 here because total that would be more than 18. So keep that in mind. You can research number bonds worksheets to get an idea of what some of those look like. Another math tool that can help with a child's number sense is a number line. Now let's think about number lines in the real world. A clock is a number line. It's just rounded. Measuring cups have number lines on them. A piece of measuring tape is a number line. And some of these number lines are easier than others. Some of them involve fractions, so they would be for an older child. But there are plenty of intermediate grade children who still struggle with number lines because they are more difficult with fractions or maybe even decimals. Think of some ways that you can expose your child in the real world to number lines, but you can also find some number lines to practice by just printing off some worksheets. There's even one quick way that I've done when I just don't have the time to sit there and look and look and look for exactly what I want. And that is, I take a regular ruled sheet of paper, I turn it landscape where the holes are on top, and I've got my red margin line. Now I can use that red margin line as my number line. And then I can use the blue line, since they are equal intervals, for my different tick marks on my number line. I could also grab a ruler, make another line on the page, and be able to fit several number lines on the same page. You would start out easily, where maybe you are counting by ones, but you might show your child, what do I do if they skip a number? How would I fill in the rest of a number line when they've left out some numbers? You might go more advanced and work on just a section of a number line with some three-digit numbers. Maybe it has the number 358, 359, and then it has a blank, and then it says 361, and your child has to come up with what's in the blank. Now, there are some online games, and there are even apps that you can use to help build your child's number sense through the use of number lines. One very affordable app that I used with my children in the primary years and even preschool years is the Starfall app. You can play Starfall on any laptop, but you can also get the app for your iPad as well. It's only about $35 for a whole year, and you can use it up to three different devices. That includes maybe having a grandparent with the password, and they do say that on their website as well. When your child has Starfall, they not only get some reading help, but there's a math section too, and I've personally seen my children easily navigate that app and have practice with fun little activities and games where they have a number line and they have to figure out what comes next or what comes before. Now there's probably many more apps out there that have some of these things, but I suggest that you try the app first. Most of them have free trials and you look for these things, real world math, plenty of counting, and last of all, usage of manipulatives, probably going to be virtual manipulatives there, and math tools such as blocks, base 10 blocks, and number lines. And that's going to set the stage for a successful math career for your child. The better foundation of number sense that your child has as a young child, the least likely they are to need math intervention in the upper grades where, you know, those grades where the parents get a little bit more nervous about helping their children. So why not just do some intervention early on and give your child a solid start? Click like and subscribe if this was helpful for you and share with a friend. Don't forget to check out the Parent Teacher Bridge on Facebook and Instagram. TheParentTeacherBridge.com has more helpful resources for your child's education, including a free guide, five quick tips to immediately help your struggling reader. So don't forget to check that below in the description. Remember, you are your child's most influential teacher.